Greetings, zombie survivors. Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to Project Zomboid Man on Fire, The Life of Wayne, which originally streamed live on Twitch March 8th. All right. <clears throat> I should give a little bit of a primer here about the series, even though it's all in commands. Like always, it's in commands. So The Man on Fire is a story about suffering and hardship. Oh, joy. I have a mod, uh, more traits, that allows for the survivor to take, well, more traits. Um, and I'll be showing what that means in a second. So here's the mod list, but again, it's in commands. Clear description for moodlets, which just shows you what a moodlet means. Doesn't do anything other than that, so. Combat text with health bars, which is definitely a bit of an advantage, knowing how much health a zombie has. Um, the way I sort of... Uh, the way I sort of balance this in my head is like, if you're hacking on a zombie, you probably know how many more hacks it has until it dies, right? It, it shouldn't be a mystery to the survivor. Uh, more descriptions for traits, which obviously isn't going to work with the more traits mod, but uh, there you have it. And then the more traits mod, which adds additional traits to the game. And thank you for all the love, Joe True, Avicrawley, uh, B-Baller. Welcome. It looks like I have fixed all my tech issues, so that's great. So we're going to start off as a solo run, of course, on custom instead of apocalypse because we're changing one setting. Uh, we'll be starting Riverside, and let's call this Man on Fire. But given that there is a high likelihood of me getting obliterated very early on because of the difficulty, I'm going to call it Man on Fire 1 because uh, there might be a 2, a 3, a 4. Oh, loud music. Uh, all right, I'll just talk louder because I can't change the volume right now. So the only preset we're changing here is... I already saved the preset called Man on Fire, but uh, here's the Apocalypse difficulty. And the Man on Fire difficulty, all it really changes is the meta event where or the statistic AI director where the helicopter comes sometimes rather than just the once. So that's the only change there. Now, for the More Traits mod... As you can see, there's a whole lot of traits, additional traits here. So the original traits will have clear descriptions. Uh, these clear descriptions are shown because of a mod, but then the more traits mod adds in some additional stuff. So I'm only gonna cover the stuff that I'm gonna be using so that you know what's going on. So we're starting off as a burn ward victim. We are going to start the game covered head to toe in burns. This is not for the faint of heart, Burns take a long time to heal and will make walking, fighting, or performing attacks excruciatingly slow. Your wounds will be bandaged initially. This trait cannot be taken alongside other traits with injuries. Deprived, we start off naked. So we're naked, covered in burns. Uh, some of the others, high thirst, that's a default one. Overweight, again, a default one. Uh, hearty appetite and weak stomach, they're also vanilla. Dexterous, outdoorsman, and then scrapper. Uh, Scrapper is a more traits. I am good at taking things apart. One additional metalworking, one additional uh, maintenance, and it allows you to craft metal sheets and pipes. Also, keep in mind that I'm starting as a metalworker, so my metalworking skill is particularly high. Gym goer, you enjoy working out. Exercise twice as effective for you, and you do not experience exercise fatigue. Also gain one fitness, one strength. Uh, tinkerer, you have a habit of tinkering with things. I gain electrical, mechanical, and tailoring skill, and then also an XP modifier. Uh, fast learner is, of course, default vanilla, default vanilla, default vanilla. Handy, keen hearing, fast learner. So if you take a look at the, the survivor here, they have a lot of craft skill. They're basically a metal worker with a lot of other skills in, or a lot of other experience, or experience gain in carpentry, electrical, maintenance, mechanics, tailoring. So leveling those core skills should not be so brutal. And cheers. All right, I don't even know what I'm gonna be calling this guy. Hey, he's Wayne today. Wayne Crittenden. Sounds good. Now the, oh, he's gonna have Mohawk, awesome. Uh, the clothing doesn't matter because I'll be naked. And let's get to it. So there is another command 
which is map. And that gives you a map of Riverside. It doesn't really show you exactly where I am because I don't know where I'll be. And here we are. Oh, I'm in a trailer park. Why is there trailer parks in Riverside? Well, the good news is, and let's just, life gives you lemons, eat it. Make life take back the lemons. So, yeah, my health, I am covered, covered in terrible burns. The good news is, starting off with water bottles was kind of nice. And yeah, I'm a money. I am, ooh, meat cleaver. Oh, so some of the things I'm going to want to do immediately is to get foot coverings. Because walking around barefoot uh, can cause you a lot of problems. And then, the more food that you eat, the better off you'll be. It increases your healing speed, so I'm going to try to stay fed. But that's going to be very challenging, uh, given that I can't scavenge. Really, the challenge of this is the movement speed, I would say, first and foremost. Because... When you are this covered in burns, you can't even outwalk zombies. Basically, everything is faster than you. Uh, can they get infected? Yes, I can get infected. So that's another, of course, challenge. Uh, so if I'm in a trailer park in Riverside, I was supposed to be in Riverside. Is there even trailer parks in Riverside? Oh, I guess there is way west near the factory. Is that where I am? Oh, that is... A frighteningly difficult start. Uh, so there's nothing in the bathroom. So I do have a death counter here. Uh, that way. Down below. And the reason I have a death counter is... There's a lot of situations where you just die. So like, if I try to open up a window into a house and get a uh, house alarm... There's virtually no way to survive because I can't walk faster than zombies. They walk faster than me. There's no way to outrun, and this covered in, in wounds, I, I basically don't fight at all. Wow. All right, so I'm leaving my first house naked. That is uh, terrible. There, another thing is I can't crouch. There is no stealth. Oh, man. So there's a lot of zombies in the northeast. To the south, there's only one, and I'm going to try to line of sight aggro him. So one of the things about not being able to crouch is, uh, I can't whisper at them. Oh, so there's a zombie in here that's going to be pounding on this window. I don't want to break the window because the window makes a lot of noise. And then another issue is, as you can see, I can't move away from him very fast either. And... Killing him is going to hurt my feet, but what little choice do I have, right? I'm going to try to get shoes as soon as I can. Alright, let's put on his pants. Another thing you'll notice is, uh, even though I'm dexterous, my... Uh, putting on clothing inventory speed is dreadfully slow. Because of how wounded I am. My, uh, my heart rate is already up and, and pumping. I hope the other guy has shoes. I don't really want sneakers. Run speed modifier doesn't really matter to me because I literally cannot run. It's impossible with how wounded I am. So stomp. Uh, stomping strength is more important. So let's see here. Long denim shorts. Oh, they both have sneakers. Fine. I might put on the long denim shorts because the pants I have don't offer actually any protection. And these at least will offer some, like, upper thigh protection. But the thing is, like, if I start to get attacked, I have absolutely no way to get away. It's basically just lights out for me. So that's the real challenge of the series is to stay as safe as possible early on. Alright, with that done, I'm going to start ripping up the clothing, because I am going to need backup bandages. Also, it's good to know that this house is not alarmed. I already opened up the window. I, really early on, I'm going to take a lot of risks. 
because I really don't have much choice or else I'll starve to death. How many days will it take for the burns to fully heal? Uh, it's a bit random. It also, of course, depends if you're a slow healer or fast healer. But um, a week or two at the at the soonest. So with this large cooking pot, I'll be able to sterilize my rip sheets. So the more rip sheets I can get, the better. Now, you can speed up your healing time by being well fed. The trouble is, I can't get food very easily because of how wounded I am. So, there are ways to speed up healing, but it also increases danger. Oh, but yes, look at all this dried food. Alright, this is my new house for now. I'm just going to drop off some of the dried goods here to lower my carry weight. Another thing to consider is that when you are over encumbered, uh, or rather just regularly encumbered, you have a greater trip chance and things like that. Um, your DPS goes down. So those are things I want to avoid. This house is uh, relatively well stocked. Despite being obviously a party house. Because they have empty... Empty uh, cans and stuff. Oh, they do have cigarettes though. Although for the first time ever, I am not a smoker. I decided not to take the smoking trait because I feel like... Um, it's a bit easy. Oh, and there's actually uncooked pasta on the stovetop, so I'll put that into the oven as well. Going commando? Well, I started off uh, totally naked, and yeah, I don't want a dead man's underwear. Maybe if there's clean underwear somewhere. Painkillers. That's going to really help if I want to go to sleep, because another thing is I'm in agony, which means that sleeping and exercise are totally disabled. Uh, so painkillers is pretty, uh, pretty essential. All right, so let's see. We will disinfect nine rags. If you take a look at my health, I have more than nine burns, so I'm going to want to try to stockpile on rip sheets for rags, for sterilized rags. Oh, my pork chop burned. That's not a good start. I don't like that at all. Rin, thank you for the bits. Bad shot for the sub. Aggies for the resub. Orange Chaos for the gifted sub. Welcome all. Alright, the water's too cold. Let me uh, eat the pasta even though it's uh, very unhappy. We've got some sort of like, maybe it's a radio going on over there. And I'm going to put this pork chop away. I'd pref preferably not eat it, so I'm just going to let it rot. Uh, did they add a lot of new areas to the map? Well, it depends on the last time you checked, but the answer is probably overwhelmingly yes. They added uh, the largest city ever to exist in Zomboid recently. And maybe I'll get a chance to get out that way, but uh, not likely this stream, given the injuries and the slow rate of healing and all that. But we'll see. Just Louisville. Uh, well, uh, I wouldn't say just Louisville. There's other areas as well. There's other... Other areas, uh... Outside of Louisville. But they're, they're smaller additions, obviously. So I suspect I'm in the trailer park west of Riverside. Unless I screwed up my starting location. And I think what I'll do is I'm going to keep some food on me. I don't even have a can opener, so I'm going to take the chocolate chips, the chips, stuff that I can eat on the go. And put everything else away. Lowering the carry weight. Even the frying pan I'll put away too. Meat cleaver I'll keep on me just in case. And then I am going to go exploring, which is scary. Did they improve the graphics? Sort of, yeah. There's some items that you can actually hold and pick up and things like that. So this was tuned in to Turbo. Oh man, and this TV 
aggroed someone. Ooh, there's a belt. Please just be one person. Please just be one. All right, belt comes later. Oh, I can't even open that, can I? Uh. Well, we're gonna have to go deal with that as carefully as we can. Oh, there's, oh, they broke in. I like your rock t-shirt, but it's all tore up. Do I already have a tank top on? I do not. And then... Ripping up the rest of their clothing for more bandages. It's going to be relatively easy to sterilize rag. So, what a sterilized rag is, is when it's sterilized, it protects against infection, much the way that applying alcohol to the wound would do. So it allows you to sort of cut out a step when you're replacing bandages, which is very important with burns, as you will soon find out. And I did knock the banana off her head, so I will put that on my face. So... In an ideal world, I would do some perimeter clearing, clearing out the area around me to make it a little bit safer. But the worry is, of course, if I aggro more than just a zombie or two, I am dead. I basically have no way of getting away. The, the best way I could get away from zombies would be to walk through doors and close them behind me and then somehow ditch them subsequently, which is uh, not necessarily an easy thing to do when you're this burned and slow. Seven more just uh, sterilized rags. And then I'll have to get that that uh, the belt on. That way I can put the meat cleaver in the belt and lower my carry weight. I probably don't need the crossword puzzles and newspaper on me either. But I'm going to keep the pencil, keep the painkillers. Keep the chips. And the chocolate. Uh, yeah, and the chocolate. I'll put the chocolate chips away. It's not a lot of bang for my buck weight-wise. I am going to continually top the pots up with water. So another thing that's probably obvious to many of you is if water or power gets cut off, my ability to clean my wounds well disappears in an instant. As soon as I run out of water, uh, I will have to scavenge for sources of water to clean bandages. And then as soon as I run out of power, it will be ever more difficult to get uh, get some medicine going. The health bar is part of the combat text mod. Exclamation mark mods will show you all of them. I'm also going to continue to wash myself, keep myself nice and clean. Because that's going to reduce infection chance as well. I would like to wash my all my clothes, but I think the likelihood of me having the time to wash my clothes every time they get dirty is very, very low, so I'll just keep myself clean. If you're wondering why I'm not using the meat cleaver, when you're this injured, your swing speed is miserably slow, which is why I'm just not bothering to uh, try to use a, a weapon. It's less effective than stomping. So I'm going to pause it for a second. Uh, that yellow building... Okay, so I am indeed in the trailer park right where I thought I was, which uh, sucks. It's probably one of my least desired spots to start in Riverside because these trailer parks have open, very open windows. It's very hard to sneak around. 
visibility is very high. Now, some of those cars might be helpful. But they're guarded. Let me see if I can pick off some individuals here. I don't really like the idea of fighting, because if the fight escalates, I have really no way to to, to escape. You know, normally in Project Zomboid, you can just walk away from fights. And I can't, because they're faster than me. High walls would be a good way to sort of de-escalate a fight, but my chance, my, I have a pretty high fail chance of climbing over a wall, so... Ooh, scissors, that's a really good find. Alright, let's stick that in the belt. That's going to allow me to start to shred leather and denim if I want to work on tailoring. Okay, got my shoes on just in time. Yeah, spear might work. But it's still certainly not a sure thing. I should get some food in me again. Because I am a bit peckish. Yeah, scissors as early is really good luck. Especially considering that I have a... Uh, XP multiplier to tailoring, which is, you know, helpful. Now, I think, given the law of averages, for me to poke through these, um... For me to poke through the... Trailer park around me, it's... I'm inevitably going to hit, trigger a an alarm. I think... Okay, so I did I did grab one from the north. Oh, maybe all four. No. Two. Three. No, they haven't really seen me yet. Maybe I'm so uh terribly disfigured that I just look like yet another zombie to them. Okay, so the house that I was originally in has been taken over by zombies. Hmm, don't like that. Right, with their back turned, can I, uh... Piss two of you off? Come on, please, please, please. Alright, that's one. I'm a little worried that there's zombies in these trees that are gonna hear me, but I have to take the, take the chance. I need to start to, uh... To clear out the uh, the vicinity. We've got a digital watch. It's going to be very useful. I would also think that uh, at this point, I have 32 rags. So I'm probably fairly okay in terms of uh, bandages as soon as I get them cleaned. Come on. Mindsettle, thanks for the resub. I can't seem to encourage them to mess with me. You're liking the mummy look? Yeah, it's quite the look. Julian, thanks for the resub as well, and cheers, Marauder. We have got... Bandages, alcohol wipes, lighter. Uh, oh, they see me. Just two of them, that's good. I can take two. Three gets to be a little sketch. And then four is basically death. Because you can stand on one and shove the other. All right. Letter opener. And there, the third came in. All right, that's pretty lucky. 
possibly have a denim shirt for me, which would be better than my t-shirt. Adding a new layer. Lumberjack shirt, yeah, that'll work. Back to this car. There's obviously no keys. As far as, no, no keys. I'll take the lighter, though. Now, you might think alcohol wipes. Eh, yeah, one wipe might be fine. I don't really need a lot of wipes because I'm sterilizing my bandages. And a lug wrench in the trunk. What about you? We got car keys. Uh, might be a dead engine, though. So the car keys might not be that helpful. And let me read this map. This will put some information up on the board. So now when I hit the M button for the map function, I'll have a map of Maldra. So there's Maldra, and here I am. Oh, and my head bandage is getting dirty. It's time to change it out. Now, the more I fight, the dirtier I'll get. So it's also a bit of a challenge of scavenging for resources, but not dirtying myself up so that I get infected and die. Yeah, this engine is pretty toast, but this car is workable. If I got fuel. Did I get the bandages from the car? No. The adhesive bandages are single use, so it, they don't really interest me. Plus, they can't be sterilized, so, again, low interest. So that's a car that's relatively intact. Um, I would say the uh, another big challenge is uh, how the heck to sleep, because I've essentially no ability to cover up these windows. All right, come on, you see me. So because I really can't cover up the windows, it's hard to go to sleep safely. Well, let's turn off the alarm that's on my my wristwatch. I don't need that going off randomly. So inevitably, my uh, first aid skill is going to level up considerably because I'm tending to a lot of wounds. If I could find a first aid book, I'd read it. Because leveling up first aid will improve uh, heal time. Let's get some food in me. I think the best I can do is a very risky sleep with windows exposed. Because it's very unlikely that I'll be able to cover up the windows in a meaningful way. I don't have access to the amount of planks it would take. So I pull all the food out of here and put it in the house that got overrun. Good. I thought this broke. Oh no, that one broke. Come on, dude, stop making noises. Oh. And I am scratched. What a time for that to break. I'm double scratched. One might be the broken glass. It's hard to tell. But we will see. When you're this wounded already, it... Oh, hang on. It doesn't make much of a difference. Oh, good, my groin is dirty. Words that you don't want to hear. Ever. Stay down. Alright, leather gloves are good. Great, in fact. 
Don't 100% know if it's going to matter if those scratches are infected or not, but we'll play it through. Only scratches, the scratch infection chance is pretty low. I should have just waited for them to break the windows because those windows do not stay intact very long. Okay, I have rebandaged. And I'll put on black silk boxers. That sounds good. Oh, I didn't actually do that. Here, have some extra sneakers. And have a map. I figured if you're covered head to toe in, in burns, Silk probably feels pretty good. I'd really like access to food. So let's heat this up and I'm just gonna eat half the cereal. So I believe this is the forearm that got, uh, scratched. Yeah, it must be. So I'm bleeding pretty hard. If they're, uh, getting re-dirtied very quickly. But we'll change them. I already have an abundance of bandages as a result of the burns, so... Some extra bleeds doesn't make that much of a difference. Now the other thing that's going to be sketchy is, uh, anytime I go to sleep... When I wake up, I'm going to be covered in dirty bandages, and cleaning all those wounds is a very time-intensive uh, process. So let's go ahead and disinfect 14 rags, and then we'll disinfect those bandages as well. Yeah, in order to lose the overweight trait, I need to lose weight. The thing is, I also have to... Uh, weigh that against the heal rate gain of being well fed. So that's another challenge is, do I lose, try to lose weight to lose the overweight trait? Um, so if, if my weight goes below 85, I lose the overweight trait. But I think probably the way to go instead would be to just keep myself well fed so that I heal faster because overweight is a lot less severe than being um, this you know, wounded can you even go to sleep in that pain? yes, when you are ridiculously tired you can go to sleep no matter what your pain level is not going to say you're going to sleep well but it's possible right, let's stop sterilizing rags are the burns permanent? No, they are not. They do heal, they just take a while. Forging is not really something that uh, this character can physically do. It, it would be a death sentence. Wandering around in the forest where everything outwalks you? Good way to die in a day. So you're not wrong, berries are a good way to lose weight, but they're also a horrible way for a burn victim to survive. <laughs> I gotta burn some calories. Yeah, I also can't exercise when I'm this burned. So, my options there are pretty limited as well. Another thing to note is I don't currently have a can opener, so all these canned goods of stuff I can't do really anything about. And you can see every time I change my bandages, my health starts dropping, so... That's another thing to keep an eye on, because I don't want to just esanguinate. That would be not good. So 
I'm going to try to clean up as many of the bandages as I can and have a nice large stack of disinfected stuff. Should probably clean the bandages on the sink. All right, let me turn that off for now. Maybe I'll make some uh, dried split peas or something, or uh, split pea soup. Uh, so this here, this bar, is basically how much health you have remaining. So when it hits the bottom, you're dead. But if it's really, really low, you'll be terminally um, wounded, and you'll just sort of die anyway. How do I do something with the split peas? Maybe I need to get the other thing in my inventory. The uh, saucepan. I haven't really been using F6 to accelerate time because of how slow the character is. If I accelerate time and give myself very little time to react to a situation, it, I will be taken by that situation. Let's do forearms first because the left and right forearms are the most wounded. Stupid zombie. My guess is that the bleeds, unless they're infected, will heal well before the burns. So, they're effectively, no, I'm no worse for wear. Crummel, thank you for the follow, and welcome. And look at this first aid skill. 17 and climbing. Oh, Jesus. Stay in there. Alright. If memory serves, the neck bandage is so terrible to replace. This one is, like, super fatal if you take any time whatsoever. If you take a look at my health. Bye-bye, health. Bye-bye. Woo! Critical. Not so good. Do you have a leather jacket? Because that would have saved me a minute ago. And you do. It's tore up a little, but it's better than nothing. Hey, Nate. I'm glad that uh, you're able to spend some time and hang out. Soon I'll have to make the decision to not clean and clear bandages because my health can't take the, uh... Oh, no. Wrong one. My health can't take the loss of life. Alright, did that big crowd move on? Except for the one. Maybe I can peel that one away. Now the other thing is uh, I'm starting to get drowsy, so my ability to um, to fight's going to go to hell. I'm just going to keep cleaning bandages because I'm going to need them clean.
Should have grabbed more of the dried goods. I could just eat raw split pea. Sounds horrible, but it'd be possible. Yeah, I'm just gonna do it. Leave the cereal for later. Wash it myself. Can I rest to regain health? Not until I'm ridiculously tired. I'm in... Uh, I'm in too much pain to fall asleep under normal circumstances. So at some point I will be able to, but not, uh, not right now. I'll have to get a lot more tired. Or I'll have to suck down more painkillers, which I'd rather just be tired. Alright, so now I'm nice and washed up. Yeah, I don't need to clean bandages urgently. I don't need to sterilize them, rather, but I do need to keep them clean. Um, Alright, let's see. I'll do the groin. Let's hope I have enough health for this. I need to get rid of those denim. I don't like them being at the top of the list. Then I need to throw this uh, leather jacket on. So denim strips go away. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure I have the, uh, well, I'll try it. Worst case scenario, I start again in not a trailer park full of zombies. No, my health is pretty stable, pretty flat. Yeah, you recover over time, gradually. Uh, of course, sleeping accelerates time, so you do heal faster when you're, um, when you're resting. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. Never ends. Let's go ahead and eat half. The thirst doesn't really matter because I'm sitting next to a sink and it's currently plumbed with running water, so... That is no problem. So, well-fed, 30% additional healing. Could you just... Man, I just can't catch up. This man's gonna need some milk. I think he's gonna need barn cream. He's probably looking a bit like V for V for Vendetta. Or, uh... Deadpool or something. I don't need to be handsome, I just need to be alive. So my protection numbers aren't terrible. The upper left arm of this uh, leather jacket is obviously ruined. Um. Yeah. But not so bad. Yeah, this start is, uh, it's not for the faint of heart. And I got a real- I probably got the worst spot in all of Riverside to spawn, as well. So that certainly doesn't do me any favors. I need to lower my carry weight as well. Because that is going to lower my speed, climb chance, trip chance, attack speed, crit chance, all that stuff. So, uh, I'll do that. Let me, um, ditch this cooking pot. Lower my weight. Yeah, it is a bit of a bandage simulator. My health is going back up now. I'm not in critical. I'm in very severe improvements. S somehow. Uh, the helicopter does give you a few days grace at the start. But not necessarily a lot of days grace, so I have to, uh, 
I have to be... What I should do, try to do is try to get the car that I have keys to uh, fueled up so that I'm mobile. That would be a, an incredible help. But the nearest gas station, I'm sure, is crawling with zombies, so it's not really... There is a gas station very close by, but it's not something that's going to be easy to do, as it's, I'm sure, overrun. Well, Eden, welcome to the stream. I catch a lot of long time, a uh, lot of longtime YouTube viewers here in the live streams. Always a pleasure to have you guys hopping from one platform to another. So I only have two sterilized rags left. I'm gonna start to wash my clothing, but I know it's kind of pointless. It's just that I'm not tired enough to go to sleep. And I don't have a lot of other things to do that would be safe to do. So just trying to keep the blood off. Now another thing to note is that when you're um, bleeding, zombies can kind of like smell you out. So it's also good to, w whenever I have to change my bleeding bandages, to um, change them quickly because otherwise I'm just attracting attention. So here's my last two sterilized rags. Go in the way of bleed. Oh God, everything's just going dirty. Yeah, shark zombies. Exactly. Lovely, lovely shark zombies. I don't know how to get out of this trailer park alive. I'll be perfectly... Are you kidding me? I'll be perfectly honest. I don't know. We're just going to have to play it very carefully. I feel like I'm um, Silent Bob or something. That's what this dude looks like to me. Hey, Mr. Snipes. Thanks for the resub. Yeah, I can I can hear the water faucet dripping. Chinese water torture going on right here. Drip drip. My life is running out. Oh, not the neck. I I don't think I can afford changing the neck bandage. It would kill me. I'm just going to leave it dirty and run the risk. It's better to have a dirty neck bandage than a to be dead. If you're wondering how I'm hurt, uh, just about. We'll tell you. I started off burned. <laughs> Covered in burns. So I'm only tired. I wouldn't mind reading something. What do infections actually do? You, well, you could check the wiki, but you can die to infections. I think it's... Oh, no. Okay, I see him. Did I put the reading material? No, I put the reading materials next door that got overrun. My carry weight is plummeting due to my injuries. <sighs> I wish there was a better way to hide from these windows, but there just isn't. I'm stuck. In front of the windows. Alright, let's eat some chocolate. Oh man, that's uh, three, six zombies there. Okay, maybe I'll stand over this way.
I don't like any of this. Shut up. While I'm here, I know that the stove is on next door. Can I... I can't even reach the chips. That's ridiculous. Alright, things that I need. This stuff. I'm leaving the can stuff because I don't have a can opener yet, so wouldn't help me. This building has a tendency to get overrun, so I'm just pulling up stakes here. Not going to bother being here. I'm going to be in the other one that actually has windows. Not that the windows are going to afford me very much time to react because they break in like four hits, as I am uh, excruciatingly aware. So to note, there is can stuff in here that I could grab later. I really don't want that group over there to see me, though. That would be fatal. We're at very tired now. You can sleep despite high pain, but my pain is beyond high. It's still agony. So I'm going to need to either take painkillers or lower. I'm just worried that if I go to sleep, I'm not going to wake up. Because I have no protection or vision blockers from zombies. If I had a hammer and a little bit of wiggle room, I, I could do something. But I don't even have that. I've got nothing. I'm going to start disinfecting the rags as well. Hey, I mean, if I wake up dead, I just, uh, I just try again, and that death counter there just climbs by one. I do not outspeed zombies with this many injuries unless I'm in a vehicle. So it's sort of like um, playing Zomboid with uh, with sprinters on or something. Where you can't outrun them. At least not yet. Once I heal up a little bit more. Once, once my lower body heals up a bit more, maybe I can outrun them. So it's a, it's a myth that um, Zomboid will kill you in your sleep. You'll never get bit or attacked by zombies in your sleep, you'll just be woken up and surrounded. And basically, it's just like, ah, you're dead. So. Oh, man, they're so close. Ah, crap, 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 crap. Right, turn this off. No, don't hit that window. Oh, boy. Uh, what can I eat? Life gives you lemons. Eat them, because it might be your last meal. Get the head, dude. Go for the cranium. Alright, that leather jacket will have to come back for later. I need to isolate these zombies as best as I can. Oh, there's two of them. Well, here is a... Battle of massive futility. Oh, 
Oh my god. Please just die. Oh, dear lord. Oh, are you kidding me with these damage numbers, yo? I'm gonna dance on your face. River dance. Weapons wouldn't help me at all because I'm so injured, my swing speed would be zero. I would not be able to swing a weapon at these guys, which is why I'm I'm not using a weapon. It would just be like, thunk for like two. Just trust me on that. Yeah, when you're tired, you do minus 95% melee damage, and when you're highly exerted, you do minus 80%. So basically, not fighting. Did the one that came in here, it's gone. Yeah. And here's the question. How safe is it for me to sleep here? I don't think I get to even... Yeah. I'm just gonna have to chance it. So I'm gonna try to remove as many bandages as I can, replace them with the sterilized ones before going to sleep because I'll recover my missing health. And I'm gonna start with that neck burn because that neck burn is the worst off. My health plummets every time I switch that out. Like I'm um, drinking bleach or something. Yeah, the game is quite un unkind when you're extremely tired and extremely wounded. No shoes would definitely get me killed. Um, sneaking? So sneaking is impossible when you're wounded this much because you literally can't crouch. It's impossible to crouch. Uh, so there's no such thing as sneaking until these burns get cleared. The other thing is it's going to be really hard for me to... Um, to, to notice if I'm zombified or not from the scratches I sustained because I'm constantly losing health anyway. So additional losing of health is like par for the course. Uh, why is my left forearm more unprotected than the others? Must be a piece of clothing. I have this lumberjack shirt. Okay, got it. How many more bandages do I have? Two more bandages and 11 sterilized rags. Yeah, I'll be able to do a full a full clothing cleaning. I just wish I could cover these windows. I just don't have any sheets or anything that could be sheets. Look at that health. Oof, bye-bye. I think what I'll do now that it's a little bit light out, though, is uh, wander over to the freezer and see if I can get this uh, frozen goods frozen again. Because I, I don't want them to rot in my on my person overnight. Because I have very, very little food available to me. Yeah, apparently we can't take the bedsheet off the bed. Apparently none of the beds in this game have, like, bedsheets. They're just stripped bare. It's like, zombie apocalypse, everybody strip your beds. The high exertion is, uh... Oh man, it's so bad. No planks, no sheets, no metal sheets, no tools, even if I had them. Yeah, if I had a hammer, I could do something, right? If I had a hammer, I could disassemble some furniture and, and board up these windows. Not that, like, a trailer park is great. Trailer parks are super sketchy to live in. 
But at least I'd have some options. But I don't even have that. I have nothing. Alright, I am clean bandaged, just about head to toe. I, in this here, I'm going to put some of the dried goods because it's heavy. I need to lower my carry weight. Guess I, uh, I could keep crackers on me, they're pretty light. And let's try to get some of this stuff frozen again. Uh, let's put the v-neck sweater away. I don't need a one pound v-neck sweater. I'll just keep the apple on me. It's not going to spoil anytime soon. <sighs> okay, it's sleep time. Uh, maybe I have to read a crossword. Well, no, I'll just sleep. Okay. Will I wake up? Or will zombies see me through the window? I think we're good. We're very dirty, but we're good so far. We're going to sleep for days. It's probably for the best, because I will have healed a lot. Alright, so I'm going to read uh, the crossword magazine before I switch out my bandages, so that I increase my action speed. I am going to put the leather away, because I don't want to clean myself with leather. I don't want to patch myself up with leather, bandage myself. I don't care that it's dirty. I'll clean it later. It's very low priority. Oh, you know, the, the crossword puzzle was just boredom. Wasn't actually, um... Happiness. So if I need to be... I don't know really how to be happy at the moment. I would... Yeah, I'm not going to risk the TV either. Alright, so let's start to work on these wounds. At least now, if I need to stomp on people, it won't be so difficult. Go outside to be happy? Yeah, but with the... With the way my body is right now, I need to I need to change these out. If I had a beer, something I don't know. Maybe cooked sausage. Let's try cooking sausage. Maybe that will make me happy. This time I won't burn it, because I'm staring at it. It's actually no guarantee I won't burn it, but I can hope. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So 17 sterilized, and I'll be good to go, which is the remainder of these rags that I'm currently sterilizing. That will bring me up to 18, which will be enough. Uh, 
Then I'll probably do the neck last. Because it's the one that brings the most uh, pain. So I'd rather have everything cleaned and not the neck than nothing cleaned but the neck. Clean burn. So, uh, yeah, this is brutal. You can clean out a burn to help promote healing rate, but it puts you into even more pain somehow. And I'll be doing that. Uh, that actually means that I need more bandages. Unhappiness minus two. Yeah, that's not much. So there you can see the heavy pain. All right, so let's go ahead and clean all these bandages so that I can actually start to uh, clean out my, my burns. Did first aid just level up? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know what I should have done besides the uh, death counter is the counter of how many people are going to ask what happened to me. <laughs> that would have been fun to keep track of, I think. All right, let's start using the sterilized a rags for the cleaning process as well. I don't really know if it provides a benefit, but I'd like to hope it does. So clean burn with a sterilized rag, then bandage with a sterilized rag. So it's now two bandages per injury, more or less. And that is a lot of medicining. But it will help to, I think it helps to, uh, to help you heal faster, so. Let's start disinfecting them. So I would say, if you're wondering what happened to me, it is the burn victim trait start. I started as a burn ward patient. I am a metal worker, so one might imagine that I got in some sort of metallurgy burn. Like, uh... I don't know, a slag fire or something? I don't, I'm not sure. But that would be good lore for why I am the way I am. A propane disaster? Yeah, maybe. Whatever the case may be, I am covered in burns. And just trying to do myself, my, uh, trying to keep myself as, as healed and clean as possible, which is a very, very arduous task because of the amount of burns and pain that I'm in, making everything very slow. Once I have everything cleaned up, I'll probably go outside if I think it's safe to... ...to do the doctoring. There is the CDDA start of your house is on fire, uh, but I think that start plus the burn ward victim is... The chance of surviving on first try is very low, and I d didn't want to have a... How is my cooking pot with water burned? 
How do, how, I, I'm such a bad cook that I managed to burn water. Oh, and it got cold. Uh, it chilled off. All right, let me um, heat this back up and I'll sterilize the rest. Clean burn with a sterilized rag. And this forearm was the one that has a scratch, so the scratch is already healed. Whether it's infected or not, I still don't know. I'll have to wait a little bit longer to, to tell that. But it looks okay. Cooking pot with water burnt. I think it's just that there was something in there before that was burnt. I don't know. It's just being weird. One thing you might have noticed is I really haven't been checking my perimeter all that much. Which, uh, one might argue I should do. Right, that's probably good enough. All right, let's go outside and do some medicine. I seem relatively alone where I am, so... I'll spend some outdoor time. Fortunately, the whole day has been basically tending to myself. So, <clears throat> both uh, scratches are, are no longer scratched. Ronald and Hallahan, thank you for the follows, by the way. Welcome to the stream, and cheers to you. By the time I'm done with the last one, I'll have to do the first one? Yeah, quite likely. I think that's probably true of people that have severe burns, is you're probably more or less constantly changing your, uh, your bandages. Having seen... The uh, Chernobyl miniseries, that's probably roughly what I look like, I'd imagine. Just a scorched man. A man on fire. Oh boy, alright. Now the payoff is my first aid skill will be very high at the end of this. Or rather, higher than zero. I'm gonna skip over the neck, I'll save that for last like I did before. So I know that I have enough oomph left in the tank. It's funny that all this um, cleaning the burns adds more pain, but I'm in such high agony that it's no different. Normally, there'd be a, you know, your your pain amount would would skyrocket doing this to yourself, but for my guy, he's just like, yeah, yeah, I don't feel it. Everything hurts. Regulars of my channel probably have heard me say this, but I do regard first aid skill as the most useless skill in Project Zomboid. So having high first aid skill is kind of pointless. My reasoning? Um, one bite and you're dead. So, and there's no amount of first aid that can cure that. And also, if you're, if you're constantly getting hurt, you're just going to be dead anyway. Oh, I did the neck. Oh, crap, 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 crap. I think I'm dead. Dead! 
death count one. Maybe I will get a better start here. Thank you for tuning in to Project Zomboid Man on Fire, The Life of Wayne. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. This series is part of a challenge and the other attempts of this challenge will also air on YouTube. So check my YouTube channel or the description of this video for the playlist when they air. If you'd like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams, and Discord has event notifications. Thank you so very much for watching. I'll catch you next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell. <laughs>